How you doing guys and gals? My name is Doug Wilson and this is Yellow Hawk Customs Outdoors. I got a uh, challenge right on YouTube from John Mistro. Uh, he's in our forum The Click, C-L-Y-H-C-K, and he's also in our other forum, The Woods Runner from the Minds of Hawk and Grizz. So, this is a Woods EDC challenge. So basically what he wants to know is, what are my EDC items when I hit the field? Um, now, I'm, not, I'm usually not a day hiker, right? If I go out into the field, it's usually for three, four, five, six, 20 days, right? Um, I like to be out there overnight and then overnight and then overnight and overnight. I just like spending time out there and sleeping out there. So if you catch me in the woods, I'm probably out there for a while, at least a week, at least a week. You know what I'm saying? Um, sometimes it's just for three or four days, but I really like to get out there for multiple nights. So, when it comes to EDC, he wants to know all the EDC stuff, not just the knives, right? So, I thought about this, and my EDC changes from trip to trip. So if you guys stay tuned, I'll go through some of my EDCs for different situations. We'll be right back. Okay, um, so what I, what I really figured I would do is keep this f fairly simple. Um, I have an EDC. Now, this is, um, <coughs> this is what I call my grab-and-go pack, right? Now, I've done a couple of videos on this particular grab-and-go pack before, uh, and now I'm getting ready to do it again. <coughs> Occasionally, the contents change a little bit, right? Um, Especially if I find a new piece of gear that I really like, like that um, <coughs> that pocket bellows that I use. Got got one of those in there now. Okay, um, so let let me start with the knives that I EDC in the field most often. Okay, and this is the one that is with me most often in the field. Right. This is the one that you will usually, if it's uh, just a casual trip, nothing heavy, right? We're not doing any, uh, uh, you know, like survival training or anything like that. This is the one you'll find on me. It's the Delta Whiskey Farn Hawk, okay? Now, the other knife you might find on me is the Viper, the Delta Whiskey Viper. Uh, I have a couple of videos on that as well. Check it out. Uh, the Viper is another one of my designs, right? Um, but right now it's with Carson Falk, and he's uh, predisposed right now, so he can't do with it what I need him to do. So uh, it's just sitting at his house right now until he can get a chance to work on it for me. <clears throat> so 
it's the foreign hawk for now okay this is the guy right here this is the one you will find on me pretty much all the time or it's around me somewhere uh, the same goes with this guy here okay now this one is not usually on me on a casual trip right but it is on the pack or it's around me somewhere right because I'm always working with this one as well okay this is the Delta Whiskey Infinity right so this uh, this knife here I should go over the foreign hawk too but uh, this knife here was conceived by me to be a wilderness EDC meaning this is the knife that will do everything pretty well right some tasks it does perfectly other tasks it just does them well there's a couple of tasks it just okay it's okay you know what I mean it works um, I think it's the perfect size for a wilderness EDC knife right and you'll get a lot of different tasks out of this knife including skinning right skinning game uh, a lot of times for EDC knives that's where they that's the first place they fail right they're just not good at skinning right real pointy tips and you know that kind of thing right um, so we got the Delta Whiskey Infinity So I conceived this as a wilderness EDC. Um, now I gotta say this, okay? Uh, when it comes to my designs, honestly, I don't. My designs are not primarily to be marketed. The designs that I come up with are for me. I do them for me first. You know what I mean? Um, only because there are thousands of other guys out there, and their grandmothers are doing this too, right? Designing knives and trying to sell them, okay? It, it's it's mind-boggling sometimes, you know what I mean? Whereas 30, 40 years ago, you might have 500 guys across the U.S., right? I got these statistics from uh, Mike Stewart at Bark River. You might have had 500 guys building knives back then, right? Now, there's like over, I don't know, 50,000 guys doing it 45,000 something like that okay so these are designs that I came up with for me right and uh, a couple of the designs the backcountry uh, and the infinity are designs I've been working on for quite a few years 10 years with the backcountry um, so and then finally it just got to the point where I wanted to have them made right so um, so I did. When I had them made, guys were expressing an interest in getting one, right? So I decided to go with Mike Wallace with the Delta Whiskey Backcountry, um, and he makes it as a custom knife that you order from him, and then I he sends it to me for the sheath, and we work on the sheath together, and it's a custom knife and sheath system. The same with this one, okay? However, this one's a little different. This one comes in runs. I order the run from LT Wright, LT Wright Knives in Ohio. Um, outstanding knife company, that's why I went with them. Um, there were a couple other knife guys I could have gone with for a production, you know, kind of semi production knife, <clears throat> but these are still custom. Um, but I, you know, in the end, I chose LT Wright. Okay, uh, I had some questions about some other companies. I wasn't real sure about this or that. So LT Wright was straightforward with me. He said, "Look, we can do this. Um, I can give you this, 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 and this at this price, right?" Blah 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 blah. So okay, and let me tell you right now, custom knives, one-offs, um, you know, runs like this are expensive, right? I wondered, I wondered, right, why is the Delta Whiskey Infinity so pricey when so-and-so is selling this knife for this, or this knife for this, right? There's a reason. This is unique. 
You can't get it anywhere else. This is a design that uh, they had to uh, start building from scratch. You know, that, that, those kind of things, right? Um, plus, the numbers that I have done, and this is the clincher right here, are very low. Uh, anywhere from 30 to 40 knives per run. Um, and that doesn't, you know, there's no volume discount. You know, if you have a thousand of them made, they come way down. You know what I mean? But anyway, exclusive through Yellowhawk from LT Wright. We're doing another run of this in CPM 3V very soon. I don't know when, but it's coming. It is coming, right? Uh, I have not talked to LT Wright yet. I have to call him this week. So hopefully I'll have time to do that. So this is my EDC, uh, you know, for heavier stuff, heavier stuff, right? And then the sheath system usually is something like this, okay? Got all these implements on it, okay? Um, I have no problem with redundancy in EDC items, right? So, and w what I classify as EDC is not always on my person, you know what I mean? It depends. This is a woods challenge. What are you going to have in the woods with you? Not necessarily on your body, but what are you going to have with you in the woods that is a compact, you know, well, these are the two knives that you're going to see the most. Right now. Right now. Okay? I have other knives. Yes. That I love to use. Yes. But these are the two you see most often. Right now. Okay? Um, I'm working on a necker right now. Uh, I'm looking for the right knife maker for it. Right? I'm talking with one guy right now. <clears throat> he might not be... I don't know. Anyway, I don't want to get too into it. Okay, so my EDC, right? My EDC grab-and-go pack is always with me, like, every day. It's in the Jeep. Usually it's in the Jeep. And if you, wherever you find me, you'll find my Jeep, right? 99 times out of 100, you will find my Jeep somewhere around, right? That is an important EDC to me, a vehicle, right? If the shit hits the fan and you're away from home, you better have a vehicle that you can use to do whatever. I choose a Jeep, right? That thing will go anywhere. You get what I'm saying? Um, so, this is usually in the Jeep. When I'm out in the field, this is usually attached to the pack or inside of it. If I got to grab and go, I grab it, right? And I usually, I'll put it on my belt in the back or whatever with, uh, you know, the molly, molly locks here, or the molly things. I know I hate snaps. I hate snaps. But these are a little more secure than most uh, because of the way the webbing is. Um, okay, so the pouch itself is a uh, cry precision uh, magazine pouch. Right, for the military. Um, I got it from uh, an SF buddy of mine. And uh, I liked it. And he said, yeah, sure, man. Take it. <clears throat> I was like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, he got a, a, a couple of knives and sheaths from me, too. So. Um, so let's open it up and see what I got. Okay? It's not very big, but... There are a plethora of emergency items that are in here, right, that help me if the going gets rough, right? If I'm out stuck in the field or, God forbid, shit, shit, shit hit the fan, this gets me started, okay? This will allow me to, okay, like procure things, right? The shit hits the fan, if it's bad enough and people are like going crazy, I'm running around procuring things. Stuff. Right? That's what I'm doing first. <clears throat> it depends on what the situation is. Um, and for God's sake, as soon as you can do it, affiliate yourself with some good group. Okay? Because in a really bad situation, 
uh, where maybe we're thrown into catastrophe, you know, Armageddon, whatever, you're not going to be able to do it on your own. You will meet your death real quick. Because people get crazy when things start going away. These, these everyday items that we take for granted, bread, water, food, ammo, right? When that starts going away and people, oh man, where am I going to get it from? You better affiliate yourself with a good group that knows what they're doing. Because if you don't, you're not going to last long. Not by yourself. Okay. Let's open it up. Alright, so. Even the way this is packed is essential to me, right? So it's got this uh, Velcro thing here, right? And then my strop comes down over everything, right? And everything is held in there. So that if I'm running, got a DD mail, right? It's not, you know, thing isn't flying all over the place, right? At, at the most, I'll lose my uh, cordage, maybe, but I doubt it. It's, this thing's pretty tight, all right? So the first thing is I got about 50 feet of bank line. You can do anything with bank line. It's cordage. It's strong. It's weatherproof. Um, it, you know, it's easy to lash. It's you can tear it apart and get little strands out of it. So it's uh, it's coated with like tar, right? So it is nylon, right? Nylon is, in my opinion, um, better than cotton because cotton, <laughs> you take cotton cordage or cotton thread or whatever, it doesn't last long out there, guys, right? I know, you know, you got these uh, period bushcrafters and they got, oh, I gotta have cotton thread, man, but, right? And they wax it. It's still not as strong as this, okay? I'm just letting you know. I've been through all that, right? The period work and, you know, I used to do... Um, Bob and I, the Grizz, used to dance at powwows, right? So we put our, our outfits together, um, you know, with, we try to get traditional materials, right? So I know cotton thread is pretty weak, right? Okay, um, so the next thing, uh, I'm just going to start pulling stuff off, okay? Uh, this isn't always on here, but it's on here right now, okay? This is... Uh, a fit what's it called a fin wolf uh, scandy folder by cold steel okay holds an incredible edge not very expensive but with that triad locking system that uh, uh, cold steel developed and I think it was developed by um, my, my guy Mike Wallace's partner what's his name uh, Andrew Demko I think came up with the triad locking system. Uh, Mike Mike may have been in that too, um, but this is a patented system that Cold Steel can, and it's one of, if not the strongest, locking system on the market. That's not going to cost you a bunch of money, right? <laughs> right. So Finwolf, very very nice knife, right? Some people say you got to take the thumb stud off in order to sharpen it. I, there's ways, trust me. All right? I don't take the thumb stud. I can sharpen it without it, okay? Well, with it being on there. Although, if you want to remove it, remove it. It's there for a reason, though. Um, okay, next one. Here's the other uh, tool, all right? This is more of a tool than it is a knife. Um, this is a Victorinox Trekker, okay? This is a very strong locking blade, right? That does the smaller tasks and 99% or 90% uh, of what you're doing in the field with a knife is small tasks. Cutting rope, <clears throat> notching for traps and snares, um, feather sticking, that kind of stuff, right? Smaller tasks that this knife excels at, okay? And it does have a locking blade, right? So let me unlock it, right? And it's, I tell you, it's a very strong blade. It's stainless steel. Pretty sure it's stainless. Yeah, these are stainless. Um, 
and then it's got some other accoutrements on it um, now it's got tweezers right and they work right these tweezers work I've used them <laughs> a toothpick it works right get that freaking deer meat out of between your teeth right that's an important EDC item to me a toothpick or toothpicks right so you got one right on your knife Phillips head screwdriver bing bang boom you're gonna need one eventually right um, then we got a, a an awl or a hole punch right and it's got a blade on it so if you really need to cut something with it say your main blade breaks or whatever you do have a secondary uh, blade on this um, what else we got here oh here it is a saw okay this thing will fell a three inch tree in about 30 seconds okay if you're good at it uh, do, 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 do. very aggressive teeth on those saws this is a very effective knife screwdriver bottle opener uh, <clears throat> can opener oh you're gonna need a can opener you're gonna find a lot of canned goods right um, if you uh, you know like I said if things get bad canned goods are gonna be around for a while okay all right so there's that the Victorinox Trekker right N never leave home without it guys all right then I got a tin right this is an Altoids tin it's got a bunch of char cloth in it all right bunch of char cloth and I can make more inside the tin but there's another tin inside that I actually make char cloth in. Um, <clears throat> got this guy here. This is my mish metal ferro rod from what's that good place? Uh, Ferrorods.com or something? I forget. Firesteels.com. That's it. Um, great, great uh, ferro rod, right? Got a mini photon these are the same ones that I put in the hawk light on my sheath systems right the one that's kind of built into the sheath these are great little lights they are highly water resistant they're not waterproof but they are greatly water resistant <clears throat> and it's right there on the ferro rod now you say what are you going to strike that ferro rod with I'm getting to it <laughs> um, strop right never leave home without it this side hand American diamond spray that's the smooth side this side Bark River black compound okay this is what I use to strop in the field a piece of leather with some dropping compound on it, okay if I need to sharpen okay um, and like I said all this is on my sheath system too okay this is an easy lap CB4 right it's smaller than the Falk Niven DC4 <laughs> I think that's funny as hell <laughs> easy lap CD4 Falk Niven DC4 duh right it's smaller right so the Falk Niven is a great stone the older ones are better right if you can get a hold of an older Falk Niven you know three four five years ago the newer ones they're okay they work well but they're not as well put together and they don't last as long as the older ones did I don't know what the hell they did but probably changed manufacturers easy lap this is nice these things are nice they come a little rough around the edges um, but just hit it with some sandpaper or a grinder or whatever and smooth them edges off you got a great dual purpose sharpener right you got a fine diamonds on this side and a ceramic hone on this side okay I'm all about ceramic um, and there's a difference between uh, honing your blade with a ceramic and stropping it and I'll uh, maybe I'll do a video on that there is a a couple of distinct differences in those two okay um, and I find one more effective over the other but we'll get into that okay so the CD4 by easy lap uh, this is another thing that I I can put on a sheath system for you right hmm. 
Hmm, what else we got in here? Let me dive in. Uh, I, I tell you, there's a lot of stuff in this little pack, right? Uh, I have a lighter, okay, with a bunch of Gorilla tape on it. Gorilla duct tape, you know what I mean? Because you're going to need tape out there too, eventually. It's just, it's a no-brainer. Have, have yourself some tape out there. Good tape, right? Um, okay, so here is that. All right. So I carry a multi uh, a multi tool. Okay. Now, let's not get into the who's multi tool is better thing. Okay. You're gonna find real quick that I don't get into all that. You know, bufo politics about tools and who's got the better tool and I got this and your tool is not this and mine is this and I don't care. <laughs> right. I carry what I carry because in my experience it works for me. Right. And trust me, I don't just take something, right? Oh, that looks nice, and throw it in my go bag. I test everything, right? I don't care if it's a half-inch piece of toilet paper. I'm testing it, right? Because when you're out in the field and you got nothing else but what you have with you, that shit better last because you never know, right? I'm one of those guys that wants to be prepared for everything and here's the philosophy guys you ready I'm gonna hit you with this this is Grizz wisdom okay the more you know the less you need okay that doesn't mean you don't you know that doesn't mean you don't go out into the field you know you go out into the field with nothing right I tell you what you want the chips stacked in your favor right so do what you can to be self-reliant out there but if you're in a really shitty situation like you got to be rescued you better be able to affect self-rescue and that's just that's another video okay anyway multi-tool see how i get off on tangents that's terrible uh this is a. Uh, uh, Leatherman Surge, okay, uh, replaceable uh, wire cutters, right, um, I snip all kinds of stuff with these, and you know, I'm not going to go through all the tools, but it's packed with tools you might need, you know, pliers, and uh, a saw, and I also have a, uh, uh, it's not in here, and it should be, uh, it's uh pretty sure it's this one that does it it's a uh, extra extra um, you know like a saw and it snaps onto it or a diamond a diamond uh, file right that snaps onto it in a certain area I, I can't I'm not gonna go through the whole damn thing because it'll take me an hour to do it um, but let me show you a couple of things that are on it Okay, the blade, this is a uh, serrated blade, real nice, real sharp. Um, this one has scissors. Uh, it's got uh, another uh, main, you know, a main blade. Uh, da, 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 da. Here it is. This is this is what I was talking about. Like I have a, a, a diamond file that goes in here, right? And this comes out. This this uh, redundancy, right? This comes out, this, uh, the saw comes out, and something else goes in its place. Um, it's upstairs in the room. It, I took it out for something. I don't remember what it was. Leatherman Surge. The bellows, okay? In inclement weather, right, uh, and you got a, a stubborn fire, the, these things are a godsend, okay? They're a godsend. And if you want to screw with your, your, tent mate or your uh, shelter mate or the guy sleeping next to you <laughs> get this in his ear right I <laughs> Bob going god damn it <laughs> oh, it cracks me up anyway so pocket bellows okay and it says pocket bellows right just go on eBay you'll find one 
they're not that expensive, 10 bucks maybe. Okay, and then the coop de grass. Okay, this is a now, now there's a difference. Okay, here's my striker, there's the striker for the ferro rod. Okay, and you've you guys probably seen enough of my videos, right? These things are badass, they don't weigh anything, right. They don't weigh a quarter of an ounce or any, you know what I mean? It, it just weighs nothing. It weighs nothing, right? And you put three or four of them in your kit and not even know they're there, right? Uh, it's got a little lanyard hole on it, and I'm sure there are other uses for it too. These things are great at scraping bark, right? If you want to scrape birch bark or whatever, <laughs> badass. But you got to use the side with the burr on it, okay? There's only one side usually that you can use these. And it's the burr. It's usually on the, the shorter end, right? See the point right there? And then the shorter end, the burr is on this side usually. And these things, right, are really good strikers. Can you use other things? Sure you can. This, this is my go-to, that's all. And then a bunch of char cloth and charred punk wood in there as well. Okay. Now, here's the big thing right here. Okay. This guy right here is a titanium striker. Okay. It's a it you know strikes sparks right. A titanium primitive striker right. This thing throws hotter sparks than regular carbon steel. Okay. You try to get yourself a titanium striker, right? And I'm telling you, it works with a quickness, right? You put a spark on one of these pieces of char cloth or punk wood or whatever, you're in business, right? Okay, so that's it for that EDC kit, right? Um, and like I said, it is in the Jeep most of the time, but when I'm out in the field, It's either on my pack or in the pack, right? Okay, and then now the last EDC item is my necker, right? In the field, I usually have a necker on me. Uh, hell, even walking around the house, I have a small necker usually on me. Um, <clears throat> but you'll generally see me carrying this guy here. This is the Mike Wallace Field Mouse, okay? Mike Wallace Field Mouse. I give credit where credit is due. I use the most effective tool for me. Okay. Um, when it comes to being out in the, in the field, right? Um, yeah, we're human beings and we like to say, so and so made this knife. I really like so and so, so I carry it. That's not, that's not a reason I carry a knife. Just because so and so made it. Doesn't, is, that's not the reason I carry it, right? I carry it because it works, right? And I, here, I'll go one further. I carry knives of makers that I don't even like. As a person, I don't think this maker is all that, but I love his knives. You know what I mean? That kind of thing, right? The tool is separate from the maker. The maker makes the tool, puts himself into it. It becomes its own entity and then you rely on the tool not the maker okay so i happen to love mike wallace but that just field mouse cpm 154 okay mostly the steel but the geometry fits well in my hand it's got a full-sized handle that's what i like about a necker right a full-size handle that you can really this blade is strong right CPM 154 this thing feather sticks like a dream and does everything else all the small tasks that I needed to do so uh, that's what I use okay uh, and then you know I got a little compass on it or whatever boom flip out ferro rod right I love the flip out ferro rod works great right Okay,
Uh, so, above and beyond this grab and go kit, right? I also have my field kit, right? Uh, it goes with me on, you know, bigger trips, right? Um, and it's usually not this full because when it's this full, this these ribs packs uh, are hard to actually, you know, wear. Uh, it, there's usually about half the stuff in here. Uh, I usually take... There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. I'm not even going to show it. Um, but I generally keep this. Um, this is... Um, I like to have a pot out there. I, I usually cook on a stove, right? On a, on a backpacking stove. A MSR reactor. And I'm usually out there in the winter, right? Uh, you know, fall and winter. But uh, I like to have a pot as a redundancy so I can cook on a fire if I have to, right? So that's usually in here. Whole bunch of stuff. I got um, snares in here. I got fat wood, chaga, uh, char cloth, ferro rods, uh, another bellows. Uh, what else we got in here? I got a big uh, piece of brain tan deer hide. You never know when you need leather out there. Okay. Um, I have sewing implements. You know, thing. You know, needles to sew with, to sew leather with. All kinds of stuff there's a whole bunch of stuff in here as you guys know I have asthma so I do carry an inhaler in here a fast acting um, mm. albuterol inhaler that reminds me I got to get this thing refilled there's not much left in here I don't need it all the time but when I do need it I need it so I carry that with me <clears throat> Uh, lighters, you know, all, all the uh, all the stuff that you need in a bushcraft kit, you know. Um, and then, you, you, like I said, I usually slim it down when I got a backpack on. And you can wear these rib, ribs packs, right? You can wear these with a backpack, okay? So they are, they're kind of full right now. But basically, you wear them like this. It's called a chest pack, all right? You wear it like that, and your whole back is where your backpack is, and then you got your, your hip belt is right here, right? So that's, that's the way you wear these, and they're out of the way, right? That's what I really like about them. You can wear them with a backpack. One thing about these ribs packs, if you're gonna buy a, a set, Make sure that you keep the straps arranged the right way all the time, even when you take it off. Because this thing gets to spinning around or whatever, and these things get all tangled up, and you're there for like 10 minutes trying to, you know, unravel it. So just when I, when I take it off, I make sure the, the straps are ready to put back on, then I just drop them in between, right? The, the two halves, and then I use, you know, I use the two halves the way I need them. There's a strop in here. Ah, here, there you go. Uh, this, honestly, is one of my most effective traps in the field. It's a no muss, no fuss. You're gonna get a squirrel or a rabbit with this, okay? It's a rat trap, okay? You take three or four of these out there and there are squirrels around, you got the right bait, you're eating, right? And that's the, that's the point of it, you know, you, it, it's, what good is learning a bunch of traps and snares that, you know, in the back of your head, they don't work, right? Now, I got about 10, 10 traps or snares that I think are effective in the field. A lot of the other ones that people teach are just too damn complicated, right? And there's, they're so complicated that they don't work, right? If I'm going to build a complicated trap, like a scissor snare or something like that, I want to know it works. Get what I'm saying? If you're going to spend all that time building a trap like that, you, you got to know it works, right? And they work if you build them correctly, right? 
figure four deadfall one of my favorites i i i dispatch i that nah, all the time right i get game there's i have a, a video of me getting um a chipmunk right with a figure four if you can catch a chipmunk them puppies are fast <laughs> and they're they're you know they're wary all right so anyway um 55 gallon garbage bag got my uh Baco Laplander saw, pair of gloves, leather gloves, blah, 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 blah. All right. That's a whole video in and of itself, okay? Uh, I'm building a, uh, a Puko 110 sheath system for a guy. Puko 110, okay? Uh, for you guys who are interested, these two knives right here are probably two of the best budget bushcrafters on the market. You can have these knives anywhere from $40 to $50, right, for just the knife. Uh, and I build a sheath system around it for you. Um, and I'll build a knife and sheath system featuring these knives, right? So if you're interested... I got the knives. I order them from Verustaleka every once in a while. I order ten of them. You know, I'm getting ready to order some more. I'm almost out. Uh, so that is available through Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors. It is a Verustaleka 110 or 140 Puko knife and sheath system. So in every video, I got to show at least one sheath knife and sheath system right um, so this is uh, this is a Dan Tope EDC knife right uh, what I tell you what I really like about this knife is it is light I mean it's light you know what I mean um, it looks like eighth inch uh, CPM 3V right that's uh that's a nice little knife there right nice little EDC nice and light uh, it's about as light as the Farn Hawk. Let me see. Actually, the Farn Hawk's a little lighter than this, okay? Uh, but these Kiranite scales, it's, Kiranite's pretty light stuff, right? Um, they, they could be really close to the same uh, weight. But look at those hexagon. Uh, I, I tell you, I... <laughs> Dan Tope, his handles are really pretty. I don't know why other knife makers don't do stuff like this, right? This, a lot of guys out there want this flair. They, they want it, you know what I mean? Um, that's why my sheath systems look the way they do in a lot of cases. Guys like the flair that comes along with the utility of it, you know? You can't, you know, I just, I like to give you the complete package. Uh, and, and it seems like Dan Tope does too, right? I think my sheath systems, um, you know, on a regular basis will look great on his knives. But, that remains to be seen. Nice looking knife. So anyway, uh, one of his clients hit me up for a sheath system for his EDC and we come up with this. Okay, this is Cryptek Extreme. It matches the color of the handle. Um, then I got the Speed Racer uh, aluminum billet uh, recess washers. Uh, these cool looking uh, Speed Racer screws. <laughs> here he comes, here comes Speed Racer. He's a demon on wheels. Every Saturday morning, bro. Every Saturday morning. Right? Nice and lightweight. Got a nylon D-ring on it, three-layer tabby dangler, really strong shit, really strong. With the tabby dangler, you can put a tech lock on it, small or large, this is a small, in pretty much any configuration you want, and it's functional, right? With that tabby dangler, you can put on a belt clip, and it becomes functional. I'm all about function. I don't know why, I just am, right? Duh. <laughs> And then um, this plate is a mounting plate for not only the tech locks, but molly locks as well. 
okay there it is scuba webbing tough weatherproof good stuff thumb ramp you got I know you want it right you're looking for it right oh no he didn't here oh no he didn't oh no he didn't again okay all right guys see ya thanks for watching